All right, gentlemen, and the one singular lady that watches this channel. Today, we're going to talk about recapping your power supply. <laughs> In today's video, we will be recapping this entire power supply for this mixing board over yonder. We're also going to be doing some really simple tests to see if this improves the performance of this mixing board. Making sure your power supply is working in tip-top shape is of crucial importance for your audio equipment. Whether you're working on a mixing board like so, a guitar amp, a radio, etc. This is the heart and blood of said equipment. It is going to be responsible for regulating all of the voltages that go to the various circuits in your equipment. A well-regulated militia, or wait a minute, a well-regulated power supply is going to be responsible for a few things, but to simplify it for the sake of this video, it is going to be taking your nasty AC line voltage coming out of your wall, it's going to filter it, it's going to make it all nice, and it's going to specify specific voltages that are going out to different parts of your circuitry in your audio equipment. For today, there is going to be a transformer in here and a series of rectifiers and transistors that is going to take the 120 uh, volts coming out of my wall and it's going to be making DC voltages on the lower end around 12 volts to 15 volts and 48 volts. We are going to be doing three tests to compare the working conditions of this power supply as is and then after I do a recap job. The first test is going to be a simple noise floor test where we listen to the noise floor of this control board and compare to see if it improves after I do the recap. The second is going to be looking at the DC voltages leaving this power supply that are being sent to my control board. And the third test I'm actually not going to be able to do on camera and it's going to take the course of weeks to months to figure out if it... Uh, fixes it because it has to do with an intermittent problem I have this board that I can't replicate on camera. We'll talk about more of that later. Now there is a fourth test I really should be doing for this video, but for several reasons I'm not. And it involves using this oscilloscope over here to measure the ripple in the voltages that are seen by this power supply. But one, it just kind of seems out of scope for this video. But two, I don't have an iso isolation transformer uh, to properly measure the voltages here without, um, you know, screwing up my oscilloscope. There's always a potential <laughs> there if you don't have an isolation transformer. If this is over your head, just forget I'm even mentioning it. And we'll probably just edit this part out. All right, so let's just move on. Okay, so for the first test, the noise floor test, I have completely zeroed out my board where every single fader for my channels, for my aux end, for my groups are completely all down. I don't have any other equipment connected to this board. We're strictly just looking at the main stereo channel for this board. As you can see here, I have it all the way up this way. I will have it in the same exact place when I do my post recap test. And I am simply sending the signal to a uh, interface and recording it on my computer. I'm making sure that the gain on the interface is exactly the same for both tests. So we're strictly just listening to the noise floor of this mixing board before I cap this power supply and after I cap this power supply. That's it. Really simple, not scientific. We're strictly just going to do an A to B test. All right, now we're going on to step two where we test the voltages that are coming out of this power supply and being sent to my control board. Before I do that, I'm going to give a very brief explanation of what we're looking at here. This is not an electronics uh, tutorial video today, so I'm keeping it extremely simple. We have 120 volts coming from the wall, coming into the power supply in the back here, going to the switch where you turn the machine or the power supply on and off. That then goes to this power transformer here where it is going to step down several different voltages through these cables here where it is going to be converted on this power supply board and the various components on, these, on the heat sink here into DC voltages where it is then going to be sent out of this uh, these terminals here and then it is going to go to a cable that comes out of the board, uh, power supply here. The cable is right here. And that goes to the mixing board to be used. Now you can see the filter caps here 
we are go those are going to be seeing the brunt of the stress in your power supply. There are also other electrolytic, elect electrolytic capacitors on this board. Excuse me tripping over my tongue. There's 18 in total. I'm going to be replacing all 18 electrolytic capacitors today. There are other components here. Obviously, we have a couple transistors here, five in total here. We have two bridge rectifiers here. We have two bridge rectifiers here. You know, various capacitors, fuses, resistors, you get the drift. It's not really that important. The important thing is, is we're, t we're swapping out all of these electrolytic capacitors for this test today. Okay, so I have my voltmeter set up here for DC. Let's put it in the right range. That's going to be useful for us. I have my schematic here that we're going to be using as a reference. Now, if you look here, this is the connector that goes to my uh, mixing board here and there's various voltages shown here let me get that on camera so you see out of this board we are going to be seeing ground 15 volts 0 volts negative 15 volts 12 volts 0 volts again 8 volts 0 volts and then 48 volts so we're going to be testing all of those voltages here now the all of these voltages are not measured from chassis ground here, so it is all measured from the zero volt coming out of this uh, this control board here. So all of my references will have to be from the zero volt. So let's go through it here. Let's start with the first one. Okay, so let's test the first voltage, which should be positive 15. There you go. We are getting 14.6. That's very close. That is good news. Let's test the next one. It's going to be negative 15. So we're getting negative 14.5. You know, keep in mind with voltages, you know, it's really not super critical for most circuitry for those voltages to be right on. You know, 5% is good. Maybe even 10% for some circuitry is more than fine. As long as it's on in the ballpark, we're good. Um, you know, this is good signs that I'm seeing here today. Let's test the next one. The next one should be 12 volts, which we are getting 11.8. That's good. Let's look at the next one. I think this one might be 0 volts. Yes, that one's also zero volts. So this one should be eight volts. We're getting 7.9. Another good sign. This one should be zero volts again. Zero volts. And then this one should be 48 volts. We're getting 47 volts. That's all great. Everything is performing great. That is a good sign for my power supply, which makes sense. I've been using this power supply without issue. So that is good. That's a good sign. The third test we're going to be doing, as I said, is not going to be done on camera. It's going to take me weeks to months to figure out if I actually uh, fix the issue by recapping this power supply. And it has to do with an intermittent noise that I get. And it sounds like a hissing and popping. If I could kind of like ex give an example here, it's like, hopefully that tickled your nipple there. And you know, it, it happens at a very low volume. If I'm playing music, you can't hear it, but when I pit pause, you could hear it sometimes. It's very intermittent, so I can't replicate it, and I'm just like basically going to have to let you know if that fixes it. Now, I already swapped out this part of the control desk here, which is like the motherboard, I'll call it, for the lack of a better term, and that did not fix the issue. So once again, I'm hoping recapping this power supply fixes that. Okay, so we're finally ready to do the recapping procedure here. You can see me using my trusty old chopstick to get the board out. And luckily, this is a very easy unit to work on. Came out relatively easy without any issues. So here's the board here. And just a reminder, there's 18 capacitors in total that I'm going to be taking out. Usually, I order my electronic supplies from Antique Electric Supply. Instead, this time I went to DigiKey. It was my first time, and I was pleasantly surprised. You know, it's a relatively cost-efficient way. Everything comes very neat. As you can see here, you could get every single electric component you could ever imagine, especially for capacitors. So, you know, I recommend DigiKey. I also recommend Antique Electric Supply. Whatever you go, make sure you get quality capacitors. Don't get the cheap Chinese ones that are going to go bad in a year. Now, you can see here I'm testing the voltages on the, the filter cans, and they're still full voltage, even though this unit had to be turned on for days. So I'm discharging it with the resistor here. 
just so we don't shock nothing when we go to start replacing the capacitors. And this whole process took me a little under an hour. It took longer than I expected just because the big filter cans were really hard to take off. And you could see you could see me here comparing an old can to a new can. You can see the lug spacing is much different. I knew that when I bought the capacitors. And luckily on the board, there was three empty positions. Um that had the correct spacing for the capacitors that I had bought. So I just simply moved those capacitors over. That position was in parallel to the old position, so it made no difference in the circuitry and wind up not being a big deal at all. So luckily that was, um, you know, I avoided an issue there and I was, I was kind of worried about that. Everything else, there was no other problems. Other, all, the, all the other capacitors came out relatively easy. No issues there at all. Now, when I go to put the board in the unit, I do run into an issue because of where I moved those big filter cans. And there is a plastic post in the unit that you're about to see in a second. And because I moved the cans, I'm pointing out it here, that hole was now obscured by one of those cans. And that plastic post no longer would work. So that plastic post is really just an added structural measure the board itself is kept in place by eight screws so i just wound up making an executive decision and i just twisted off the little plastic nipple on that support and i'm not really worried about it you know this unit's not going to be moved around at all you know it's going to sit in one space i'm not moving it on a truck or anything like that so i don't need that extra added safety i ain't worrying about it so i just took it off so now we're ready to move on to the first test once i put everything together and put all the ribbon cables together and that is going to be the noise floor test so let's listen to the results And now for the voltage test. All right, so recapping dud and tests are done. Let me know what you guys thought. Were you surprised? Is what you expected? For the noise floor, I, you know, while I was hoping the noise floor to drop just for, you know, why the hell not reasons, you know, I wasn't surprised that the noise floor was completely the same volume as it was in the pre-cap condition. And I was not expecting a tone difference, though. And actually, the tone of the noise floor now is kind of seems more obnoxious than it was beforehand. The good news for us is that the noise floor during normal operation of this mixing unit is never heard. It is very low. I just had it, you know, elevated for the purposes of this video. But my out my other outboard equipment is much more noisier than this circuit board or this mixing board rather. So I'm not concerned about it at all. That's not why I recapped the power supply to begin with. Now the second test with the voltages I wasn't expecting to see really any difference. I was, um, you know, more or less confirmed with the 0.1 voltage differences we were seeing, you know, closer to the design values once I did the recapping. And for all I know, the changes that I measured there are just because I was doing this at a different time of the day and the line voltage coming out of my wall was slightly different or maybe the battery in my, my multimeter is a little weaker. Who knows, right? The point of, the, the point of it, though, is... The voltages I was reading in both pre and post conditions are close enough to design values that it's not going to affect the performance of this board whatsoever. Now for the third test, and the reason why I recapped my power supply to begin with, is that intermittent popping noise and it's really just way too early to tell to see if I fix that. So I'm going to have to keep you guys updated and let you know in the comments whether or not that that did the trick. And I'm really hoping it does because, you know... It's been a source of stress for me for the past, you know, two or so years or three years using this board. So I'm really hoping to fix that. Now, the fourth test, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I wound up doing it anyway. I used my oscilloscope to do the DC ripple test. You know, luckily, I didn't need an isolation transformer to do that with this board because the signals were not referenced to ground. And everything was referenced to the zero voltage uh, signal, as I was saying before. And the results were actually completely inconclusive. That's why I didn't wind up including it in this video to begin with. But... For all intents and purposes, the DC ripple and pre and post conditions was almost exactly the same from the measurements that I did. Now, the question, we go back to the original question of, you know, should I be recapping my power supply? And depending on who you ask, you're going to get, you know, m much different answers there. And, you know, some people have, you know, this is just preventative maintenance that you need to do. Other people have the perspective of if it ain't broken, don't fix it type of thing. And... 
With electrolytic capacitors in general, you know, that's, you know, you're going to get a lot of variability there. However, with a power supply capacitor, filter capacitors, you know, those are more likely to go bad uh, quicker. And so, you know, most people are going to say swap those out. So maybe if you have a piece of audio equipment, maybe you just swap those out and you leave the, the capacitors in the auto circuitry alone unless a problem arises. You're going to save a lot of money that way. You know, I spent $40 just on the... 18 capacitors in this power supply. The bulk of that money, though, came from those big three filter capacitors. That was probably about, you know, half, 50% of that $40 right there is just for those filter capacitors. So, you know, you, you have to do, uh, you have to weigh your uh, pros and cons here, both on price, the time, etc. You know, some people view it as preventive maintenance. Some people say you need to do it. It's also going to depend, obviously, on the age of your equipment. The only time I've ever really had that I could think of a problem with a capacitor is with my Shure M67 uh, mixer here. And, you know, that unit's probably from the early 70s, maybe late 60s. And the filter capacitor in the power supply blew up, scared the hell out of me, made some smoke, and smelt pretty damn good, if you ask me. And, you know, that was in the power supply, you know, filter section. So, unsurprising, that's what, what went first. I wind up re replacing all the capacitors on that mixer just because why not I'm there. So, like I said, you know, it, it's, depending on who you ask, you're going to get a different answer. You know, I hope you guys get something from this video. Uh, oh, that was weird. That was weird. One of these days, I'm going to figure out how to end a video. One of these days. But this is not one of them. All right. Mouth.